Thank you very much for watching or listening. Um, today I have a very special guest, uh, an absolute legend in the bare knuckle world. Today we're going to be talking about this man's life and career, Paul Hills, the Soul Snatcher. It's got to be one of the coolest names in the fight game as well. So we'll get into that in a minute. Honestly, love the name. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, this man's journey has been incredible so far, from starting pro boxing um, initially, you know, unlicensed with the with the gloves on at a late age. Uh, having some success in that, um, obviously moving into pro boxing, then moving into bare knuckle. Uh, he holds a world record for the fastest knockdown in bare knuckle, which I think is 2.5 seconds, which is... Uh, 2.3, Liam. 2.3, mate. <laughs> 2.3, okay. That is something you don't hear every day, so the fastest knockdown as a world record is not going to be beaten anytime soon. Um, most of his wins are first round knockouts. Um, the All last of them. But no, all, all, all my wins. This is this is what um, one of the reporters said the other day when he was messaging me. He went, "Yeah, so you've got a hundred percent KO win ratio." Yeah, and yeah, I went, yeah. no, no. "I said I've lost three fights." He went, "No, what I mean is the five you've won." He said, "You've won by knockout," yeah. um, and that, that was all in the first round, apart from the last fight. But it was still a knockout win. So he said, "You actually got a hundred percent KO win ratio." So I thought, "Yeah, I'll have that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have. All of them by knockout. That's it. You're like, yeah, that's, that's it. And um, yeah, all knockouts. And you are a vicious puncher. Like I said in the beginning, you just get them out of there. So um, so yeah, you heard it first, guys, from the man himself. So yeah, so we've got a lot to talk about today. You know, some really, really cool stuff. Obviously, Paul's last win uh, was a big one as well. Very exciting where he beats Porter Stitt, who fights for BYB Extreme. You know, some of the fans will have seen that with the triangle ring. He came over here to fight and uh, Paul got him out of there as well. So, I just want to say before we get into it though, obviously a big thank you for coming on, on the show because I always say to people, you know, you're taking time out of, uh, out of your evening and everything, so just just a big thank you for hopping on first and foremost, mate. Yeah, good stuff. So, um, let's get into it. I mean, I, I guess the, the last fight is uh, the place to start, like I said to you, you know, because that's, that's the one that's on people's minds right now. Um, so I want to get into that a little bit. Obviously, you know, Curtis, he, he's a good fighter. I mean, you know, the, the guys you've got out of there as well, they've got a lot of experience between them. Obviously, he's done quite a bit in MMA, obviously a bit with the bare knuckle, different things like that. So, but you know, you, you got him out of there. It was a great fight. So with this in mind, I don't have like, and I like to do this sometimes, a really specific question about, you know, this round or, or this thing, but just what you'd like to share with the fans about the fight, you know, how you rate the knockout, how tough he was, um, just, you know, how it lived up to your expectations. Anything that sticks with you that you'd like to tell the fans about that fight? You know, that's where yeah. I'd like to start. After the, um, after the Conan let down, literally let down at the ring, you know what I mean? We'd done the way in Conan had given his speech about, you know, how he's going to do this, do that. And fair enough, I thought it was on, you know what I mean? And getting let down like that, Liam, it, it psychologically really fucked with me. Um, more than what I thought. I mean, I didn't realise how much I actually get out of actually getting punched in the face with bare knuckle, you know what I mean? I, I'm always thinking this, the, you know, the praise, the win, the glory side of it. But psychologically, for me, there's a lot in it for um, shush. There's a lot in it for the actual participation of the fight, you know, um, and, and you know the, the, the conflict, you know, the combat. Of it, I get a lot out of uh, it's therapy to me in, in a mad sort of way. Um, and getting dropped, at, dropped and leapt down like that, it really broke me. So when the quarters fight was drawn, um, I'd done a little bit of homework about him, see his MMA, blah 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 blah, and I just thought, right, there's a job that's got to be done, and it's got to be spectacular. You know, I'm listen, I'm not saying my, <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm some sort of great fighter here, but I'm saying I knew I had to get a job done in a certain way to make people know that you know I, I'm here, I'm here to stay at the minute. You know what I mean? Um, after the Nathan loss and the Conan pull out, it's just it's, it's all been sort of downhill, Liam. So I wanted to make a statement. I didn't really go in there with nothing nothing set. I had a lot against me, to be fair. I'd lost the gym that I was training at. I'd lost my job. Um, you know, not that I'd give a fuck about any excuses. It was just the circumstances I was in at the time. 
pushed on as we do. Um, took my, I, I'd lost my coach as well, so I, I solely trained myself for this fight. Um, and uh, I knew what I had to do, Liam. I knew the job I had to do. Um, and I went in there and just executed exactly the gritty, shitty, ugly way that I do. You know, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no glory in it. There's no elegance to it. And I'm not, no one's ever going to say, "Call that performance, but we put on was, you know, super. Look at his skill, look at his footwork, and all that." You're not going to get that from me. But what you are going to get is me knocking people out. Um, you know, or, or look at my record. It's either I knock people out spectacularly, or I get stopped spectacularly. <laughs> so I've got one of, you know, I've got one or two options. But the fans seem to like it. Um, yeah, and that was it, Liam. We just got, we just got in gritty and hard. And I, I literally walked him down. You know, he hit me hard in the first round, um, and, and done my nose, done one side of my cheek. Um, yeah, he, and that was in the first three or four seconds. Um, and it really sort of, it, it opened me up. I mean, I think most fighters feel that if you put that pressure on someone, they're going to fold or it's going to at least ask them to question themselves. But I'm not going to lie, and I'm not trying to sound like the fucking big hard man, but put that pressure on me and you're going to get out of me more than what even I expect of myself. You know, I know I can perform under certain ways, um, you know, and really, you know, dig in. But when it's stuck on me, I feel like it's the only way to, to just really explode into it. And I think that's what I've done with Quartz, you know. And yeah, we grinded out, mate, and stopped him as well, which is always a result. Yeah. And it was a cracking fight, you know. I mean, all your fights, they, you know, they are all action and everything, like you say, they're always exciting, or, you know, like, you not know, lose or whatever, you know, it's always exciting, excitement with your fights. So, 100%. But yeah, and, and obviously, when you watched the fight, it was it was good um, on all levels. But I, I saw BKP, you know, put up that one clip where you're both basically swinging. You know, he's got his head down and he's swinging, and you know, you're going, at, you know, going at him. And you you guys are really sort of bringing out the best in each other, you know, to be honest, which yeah. I thought I thought was really good. Because to be honest, the fair, the the pair of you, it was like fire with fire at that point. And uh, but yeah, you know, you've got that killer instinct, and when your back's against the wall, obviously you you do see it come out as as you do with a lot of guys, but. It's a cracking fight. I mean, that's not even a question. That's just me saying, like, it was, you know... Oh, I appreciate that, Liv. Thank you, mate. I had a lot of good feedback, and it was positive for me because some of the feedback I got, mate, I had from people that don't even... Fight, they don't particularly even like me as a fighter, Liv, and that's the truth. But they just said, listen, Paul, respect when it's due. Cracking fight, great finish, do you know what I mean? Like, you've really done well. You know, and they're probably people I'm never going to speak to again, Liam. So it was nice to have that from the BKB sort of fan perspective, you know? Yeah. Amazing. It is. It is good to hear that you're getting that support, you know, and that is uh, that is really good. Obviously, um, we can touch on a couple of things, but one thing I do want to highlight here: when we were planning this this interview, you know, you were saying to me about how you're being sort of a bit avoided at the moment. Basically, you know, is, is the best way to put it. You know, you were saying about uh, about since that win, you know, there's been some struggles, and I want to go into that a little bit in terms of who you'd like to fight next, if there's anybody specifically on your mind. I don't know if you just feel like whoever they put in front of you, that's who you'll fight, or if there's specific people that you want to really go after now. I'm Are sort you... of taking the attitude uh, that, that anyone I put in front of me, I fight them because I think that like a beggar can't be a chooser. And I, I, I do think tactics come into it, and I am 40. Um, really, what else and how far am I going to go in this, you know, in, in the organisation? Um, I'm not stupid, Liam. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm a realistic man. I know exactly what it's about. Um, and I feel that, obviously, Nathan, he, he, he stopped my sort of my, my journey because, obviously, he, he dragged through that win. And he, what we won, for, you know, respect to him. He got a decision. I didn't do enough. And that's, that's the fucking cold light truth about fighting, you know, and that is it. Um, if I would have stopped him, knocked him out, then, you know, I'd be the champion. So I can't piss him out. I didn't get the job done. Um, but it's the fact that when I thought that with the Conan thing, you know, take Conan out and then I'll be straight back in chomping at Nathan's bits. You know, I don't think BKB could have really denied me because it was meant to be a, an eliminator. Conan had lost against him. I've lost against him. So whoever won got Nathan. Now it's gone off to Canelli and Nathan for the British title. I don't give a fuck if I have fight either of them. You know what I mean? There's nothing in me. like Whoever's got that belt, I'll be ripping it away from them. Um, obviously, the, when it comes to who would I like to fight, I'd love to get that win back over Nathan because he's already beat me. And I do think I'd stop him, Liam. And that's not me thinking I'm great or nothing. I just I think I went into that fight not knowing what five round takes. 
and I can piss five rounds on my fucking head, you know what I mean? Like, and that's the cold eye truth, mate, you know? I've got, no, I've got no fear of nothing in BKB. That was the only thing was the depth of the rounds. And it's not even that like I ain't done it before. I've done eight rounds as a pro boxer, you know, competitively for titles. But it's the fact of the matter is, in bare knuckle, the, 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 the damage is more, you know? It's more sharper, it's more vicious. So I didn't know if I had five rounds of that at me at 40. And I have definitely, I've got 15 rounds of me if it comes to it. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no question, questioning, there's no questioning that limb, you know? So anybody that fights me over a tight title, you know, t title rounds, they're fucked because I, I, I'll now believe in my ability to get through them rounds and get a knockout, you know, later on in the rounds. So anyone, Liam, I don't care. Whoever's got that belt, whoever wins out of Kennelly and Nathan, nothing personal, but it's the fact of my goal to become British champion. I'll fight any of them at the drop of a hat. Um, there's, there's like, there's six competitive fight, six competitive fighters on the next show, all at my weight. Yeah. Now it's very rare that people through, you know, BKB and everything make a six, eight week camp with no injuries or nothing. So I'm fucking my, my, my bags packed you know what i mean i'm on weight pretty much already to get out a phone call it could be the opportunity them i don't fuck about the phone calls don't have to be thrown to me twice you know what i mean i i've got one answer and that's yes it doesn't matter who it is when it is you know the soul snatch is there to take that fucking chance um so when it comes to who's next mate i don't care you know what I mean? I want big fights. I want big names, Liam. You know what I mean? I've only got, you know, for someone else who's 20, they might have a 10 year career. Well, I ain't 40. I was going yeah. to ask you about the, the world record, because obviously you are a world record holder. Um, like we were saying at the beginning, 2.3 seconds, uh, fastest knockdown in BKB history um, against Bashir. Obviously, a great fighter as well. I interviewed him about a month ago. Uh, so that's the, that's the fastest knockdown in. BKB history. So, talking about that, in terms of, I'd like to get your your thoughts and your memories on obviously going into the fight. In terms of, um, you know, if you expected to knock him down quick or you know as quick as that, and also how you felt when you did and when you set the world record. You know, but just anything you'd like to say about it because it's an amazing record. I don't think it'll be broken anytime soon. So, um, you know, or anytime ever probably. You know, because I mean, if you had to knock him down faster, you know what I mean. So, with that. Just share with us a little bit about, um, you know, about what went through your mind when that happened, how you feel about it now, um, and just anything you'd like to say about it, really, you know, about holding that record. Yeah, well, so, I mean, coming up to the Bashir fight, um, there was a lot going on. Um, I, I can't remember what stage it was. I think it was after the, the Mike win. Um, yeah, well, it was coming up to the Bashir fight. It was his first bare knuckles. Um, I've got I I got I got told that he he, he loved his K one and uh, he's got a great spinning back kick knockout on a or it's like a jumping roundhouse kick on the internet on YouTube um, and he knocks gets a spark out with it obviously in BKB you know it's, it's, it's there's no feet involved so I didn't have to worry about his kicks. Um, but yeah, obviously Bashir is a very tough man. Someone had said to me as well about his Taekwondo thing or whatever. Um, and he was ranked, I think he fought for the GB. Um, yeah, no, in fact, he did. He fought for the GB on a Taekwondo um, team. So I knew he was, you know, you know, sort of schooled in the combat art sort of thing. Um, thought it was going to be a right naughty fight because I got told he loves to tear up and, you know, he's a bit lively as a character sort of thing. He was very respectful, though. I will give him his jokes all the way through it before, after the fight. Uh, yeah, he, he was very, you know, very respectful. But, yeah, we, we thought he was going to come and, and, and come, you know, come with thunder sort of thing. And uh, when I met him in the centre of the ring, and uh, the referee like made us touch hands sort of thing. I remember locking eyes with him, and he was like he was he, Liam. I can't describe to you how much he he looked like he was fucking dying to just get his hands on me. Like he, he looked like you know he was like chewing on his gum shield sort of thing, screwing his face up. And I sort of thought, fucking hell, he's, he's going to come out of traps, like, he's going to come out of traps, lively sort of thing. So as I went back to the corner, we called him, we, we coach Paul at the time. Uh, he's not been coached no more, but he was at the time. We worked together for, uh, uh, you know, a lot in BKB. And um, he went to me, make sure you stick to your jab, step back, let him run onto shots, you know, stick to your jab, you know, don't lead with your right hand. 
I went, yeah, boss, yeah, yeah, yeah I've got this, got this sort of thing. <laughs> and then as I come out, as the bell went in, I come out and I see he, put his, he sort of put his head down. But I was already one step ahead of him, Liam. I was already towards the centre of the ring. So I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give him a right solid hard jab straight down the pipe. And as he took the next step, I just fucking see the gap with his left hand down. And as he was leading in, I just thought, yeah, over and right. And fucking, it, it triggered off, mate, and just landed, like, landed sweet, mate. It landed, it landed just under his eye here. But obviously, the range that I've got on the shot probably, like, baffled him. Do you get what I mean? It, it knocked him over, and he actually grabbed my knee. Because I didn't realise after the fight, the next few days, I couldn't walk on my left leg. Um, and and I, I just, I thought I twisted it, you know, when I went over or whatever. And when I watched the slow-mo back, he actually grabs my knee and turns me over like, like as if he's doing a takedown. Um, and that's how, I, that's how I damaged my knee, obviously. It, I don't think he realised what he was doing, to be fair. Um, but yeah, mate, and, and, and I stood up and obviously uh, I've got the experience to know, you, you know, when you've took someone down, you just stay calm and you look for the next opening. Nine times out of ten, they're going to come on to you trying to sort of, you know, the bravado of you've just put me over, I'm going to fucking get one on you type thing. You know, you look for your gaps. Um, and he did. He, he come out and he, he sort of hesitated at swing and shot. And I swung and half stopped it because I knew it weren't, it was, I was out of range sort of thing. And then as he sort of hesitated to, to throw saying, I, I then threw my shot, but it was already half stopped, if you know what I mean. So it was only about eight inches away from his face. Clipped him on the end of the chin, um, and that did, that stiffened his legs up. He went over, and then I sort of knew then that it was only a matter of time. And I think the third knockdown, I think he was already done, Liam, sort of thing. He, he went down, and the referee more pulled it. And he was actually bleeding like, out of his eye from the first shot. Um, so I knew he was pretty fucked up, if you know what I mean. But, yeah, I just think that aggression just come in, mate. If I see that gap, I'm going to go for that, whether it be in the first round or whether it be in the fifth round. You know, um, yeah, and someone then messaged me a couple of days later saying about <laughs> that I should go for like the record, see if there's another bare knuckle knockdown quicker or whatever. Um, and I didn't really think much of it, Liam. I didn't really get, you know, I just thought I was just buzzing from such a fucking knockout, being knocked down another first round knockdown. I was buzzing, mate, you know what I mean? Um, there was a few factors that I actually go into before the Bashir fight. I was like added to my nerves. But anyway, this record, we, we uh, I thought I will drop the Guinness Book of Records an email. Um, dropped to an email. But this was when we was just going into lockdown, I think. We, um, I think the times when, I can't remember properly, but there was something about them not contacting me back. And they said they'd contact me back within three months. So I sort of thought, oh, you know, whatever. Anyway, long story short, mate, one day I've got an email back. And we've got your uh, we've got your thing as a bare knuckle thing. They actually did say they didn't class bare knuckled as a sport um, as such. And there was a few emails to and from back to me and them saying about you know it is classed as a sport. You know it's televised. Blah 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 blah. Then they were saying that it could be classed as maybe like an ultimate combat knockdown or something like that. But I don't, I think there's actually something in MMA that's quicker. Um, I, I, I don't know. There was something anyway, Liam. But yeah, so they said, listen, there, it is the fastest recorded BKB knockdown. You know, you are, you hold the record. There is no, you know, there's no other record that we can come up of come forth. Um, I don't know whether it's actually gone into the book, but I've got an email. I'll put it up on my Instagram about it. You know, the, the, you know, the Guinness Book of Records email. We back sound about it. So that to me, mate, is 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 you know, is the record. You get what I'm saying? Um, they sent the email back. Obviously, I, I've not checked the book. I don't even know if there's a category in there for it. But but it was done, mate. You know what I mean? Two point three seconds. I mean, I know that Yuli Monster from BKFC has got. I think it's two point eight or maybe three seconds for an actual knock out he knocked the geezer spark out um yeah so there you go mate that, that was that story you know yeah it's amazing though i mean it is still a great achievement and it is still good you had it recognized even though it sounds like you had to push a bit and you know put a bit of pressure on them to, to recognize it obviously the fact don't, that i don't yeah. think that they're on the bare knuckle thing mate as a registered sport i, I don't think I, it sounded like the person that was eating man he didn't even know that it was kept, like that it is an actual sport do you get what i mean Liam? um 
And obviously, because of lockdown, they, they, they were taking months to return, weeks to return each email. Um, and yeah, so I didn't really, you know, I couldn't be bothered to sort of fight my corner. <laughs> so I was telling them that I called, he's a, he's a registered sport or whatever it is. But they said that there's not a registered knockdown quicker. Um, so yeah, that was it, mate. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Well, it's amazing to get the uh, you know the inside track on that type of thing, you know, and, and sort of hear what happened behind the scenes as well. Mm. The fight is, you know, the fight is famous as anything is out there, so many views. But you know, to hear what happened behind the scenes with yourself and everything is, is very cool. So moving into a couple of other things that I think people would love to hear about. I said at the beginning about you know the Soul Snatcher name being one of the coolest names that there is in you know in the sport, and I do I stand by that. You know, there's there's all different names people have got, and there's a few very cool ones. But that one obviously it just sticks, and I just think it's I think it's awesome to be fair, man. It sounds like fucking just savage, you know, just when you hear it. So I want to get into like where that basically where the name came from. You know, I mean, like who came up? Well, with first it? of all. Um, when we come into Bare Knuckled, um, they called me uh, Paul the Brawler Hilts, um, and I just went with it. I don't know who, who made the name up as such. Maybe the ref, uh, not the ref, sorry, maybe the, uh, you know, the, the person who calls out on the mic or whatever. Jim and Joe might have made it up, but they sort of said Paul the Brawler Hilts, and I thought, yeah, I fucking, I'll have that. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's definitely worse nicknames out there. Um, I'm definitely not known for my boxing sort of cleanness, if you know what I mean, Liam. So I took that. And then I can't remember, but it, it, it must be something to do with one of the writers or reporters to do who, do, who cover the Ben Knuckled. And they put something up on Instagram saying, uh, Paul Hilt's the soul snatcher of BKB. Um, and I just thought, yeah, you know, I like this a lot. I'll have that as a name. And then I thought, Liam, to be fair with you, mate, that is, at the time, I'd have obviously only had first round knockouts, um, and I think I'd lost as well, but I'd, I'd, uh, I'd only had first round, well, I only had, still had first round wins. So the soul snatcher was quite a good way on that thing, but in myself, before my last fight with Stitz, I, I, I do know that I've got it in the tank, you know, or I'd like to think that, I, I, you know, I train hard enough to know I've got it in the tank. And that is my fighting sort of skill, Liam, is I'm never going to go in there and ping someone off with a jab and get a thousand jabs off and move my feet lovely and dance around and make them miss and fucking make them pay and all that. I'd love to do it. <laughs> it would mean I wouldn't have all these scars over my head from the bare knuckles, yeah. But, you know, I, I'm, I've not got that ability. And I do believe that coming to the trenches, you know what I mean, going to the sort of the deep water, as you say, um, I do come into another gear and I do think that falls out the extra in me. And, 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 and when you're in them, in them fighting, you know, that fighting zone, you are snatching each other's soul because you're asking things of yourself that you don't know you've got and you're taking things away from your opponent that he thinks he's got over on you and that is in his soul. You know, and as I'm fucking pounding someone down and I'm like, in the Castro fight, I see it more than any of my other opponents. I see in his eyes, Liam, as the later rounds get on, he was fucking fearful, mate. And I'm not taking nothing away from him. He beat me. I actually messaged him saying, it's only me and you that know, Nathan, in them later rounds, you fucking know that I was, I was on it. You know, I was breaking it. Give it to me again. Give me another five round fight. I'll fucking stop you. You know what I mean? I know I will. Um, and that's the sort of belief I've got in myself and in my soul here and in my character and in my mindset. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I, it would take it would take a fair old man to break break me in there. Um, I even asked questions out about after the Barry Jones things, whether that was just a belief that I had of myself, that, I, that, that is just my belief. But Barry Jones switched my senses off, bruv. So even though, like, in my head, I was thinking I was acting like I hadn't been pinged and, and I was, you know, seeing through it. But Patterson calling it off, he's no mug and, and he knows me and he knows that I'll fight to the last two for now. And he sees sank in my eyes or in, in my, you know, in my coherence to him sort of thing that he wasn't happy with. And he might have saved me getting hurt that night, you know what I mean, Liam? So as much as obviously the soul snatcher, I've got that in my heart that I love, that's what I love to do to people. Um, it just goes to show that no matter what your beliefs are in yourself, when with bare knuckle, it's so ruthless that if them senses are switched off, mate, it don't matter if you think you're King Kong, you know, you ain't getting through it. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, amazing, 100%. And uh, yeah, you have shown that you can dig deep on everything as well. But um, yeah, everything you said about the ref, 100%. I mean, they, they mm. know, 
know what to look for. I mean, they, they, there's so many things you said there, but 100%, 110%. But definitely the character thing, though, is something else to mm-hmm. talk about. It's something I was going to get into a little later, but we'll, we'll get into it now. Because obviously, right after boxing, I mean, it's, it's the most brutal fight sport, you know, around, obviously, because you're bone against bone, and, you know, it's just it's just tough, it's ruthless, vicious, everything you said. So, you know, so that's obviously the physical aspect. But you've got to have a good, like, mental game to compete in it as well, do you know what I mean? You've got to have the right mindset, you've got to have the killer instinct. And something I think that people sort of overlook a bit with, with fighters and with, especially in the bare knuckle, is the mental side of it. And you were saying there about the character and about digging deep and this and that. But I want to get into a little bit, like, say in a fight week or in like a, like a build up to a fight or something like that, or when you're preparing for a fight, on the mental aspect of it, what do you sort of think about on the build up to it? You know, do you sort of put it out of your mind? Do you focus on the guy? Do you, you know, staying positive? Not so much from nerves and things, because I know you're experienced, but it's more from like going into, you know, into the side of it that the fans don't see of like what mm. I'm fighting. You, you get where I'm coming from with this. I want to share a little bit about that because people just people skip over that all the time, and uh, I think it's a really interesting. Yeah, really, side. I've got to say, Liam. I think I, I think I, my my beliefs and reasonings for the reason why I'm still in the fight game now is totally different to any other fighter's journey. Um, I, like it's therapy to me, and it's not therapy to me the fight, and you know I don't look for praise in my fights. That's why I'm. A, I know it sounds silly, but it's why I, you know I can take losing. Um, it's because I'm not after being the best and the bollocks and everyone thinking I'm great. I don't give a fuck what people think about me. You know what I've gone through to get where I am. And what I go through fighting, you know, I get criticism. I get criticisms of, of fucking loads of people, Lim, and I don't give two fucks about it, mate. You know, it's my journey, and I'm doing it for my reasons. Um, it, it's just a side of things like in camp and things like that, Liam, most people are looking for that result and, and, and the win and chasing that, that side of it. I don't. Every day I get up um, and I face my demons every day and my training is my therapy and it pushes me through. And the harder I dedicate in that, the more I'm fighting my demons um, and the more I'm succeeding in things that I shouldn't be succeeding in um, and the more I'm proving people wrong that say that I shouldn't. And, and that's not just people's opinions. I, it goes deeper than that mate you know I've had professional opinions telling me that you know I shouldn't be uh, competing at a physical level at the age of 40 where I am in, in my circumstances and I've tipped bollocks to all of it mate um, so every day when I'm sort of you know like I'm, I'm, it's saying so corny but I'm living my dream it's not other people's dream other people have lived a damn life and think it's a load of shit but it's a, it's a dream that I'm living in my my eyes that's my recollection that's that that's my buzz that that's my reasoning for it that's my drive and when I go to fight Liam it's more like I'm collecting my prize it's not that I've got to do that night super well this that, and the other because if I've not done well in camp I'm losing that fight you know, if, if I've not dedicated for eight weeks and give everything, then you're not winning that fight, you know. And that's the mental buzz of it, of where I don't look at it like it's a focus thing. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I feed my fire daily. I get my therapy every day, which means when I come to fight night, like, I'm fucking on it, mate. You know what I mean? I'm on it. There's no corners have been cut because if I've cut corners in all my camp, it means that I'm at a, a bad place in my life because my fighting does things for me that it doesn't do for other people, Liam, you know? Yeah, it, it actually makes total sense, you know, to be honest. And I know you're saying... It's my circumstances, bro. I'm not saying this out there and saying it to other people to say, yeah, because you know what I mean by it. Yeah, do you get me? No, people ain't going to get me and they're probably going to think, yeah, whatever, mate, you're talking a lot of bollocks. But it's just my reasonings, Liam, you know? No, no, it, it does make sense. It does honestly make I mean, obviously, because I deal with fighters all the time, you, you get to hear about the different motivations and the different reasons why people do it. And obviously, they do rarely, do you know what I'm saying? They do rarely quite a bit. But one of the things I would say is I have heard that from only a couple of people, only a handful of people. But, you know, I, I like to get into it because I just knew with yourself mm. there would be an interesting answer, do you know what I'm saying? I just had to feel yeah. it. Because you can feel the drive off some people, do you know what I mean? You can really feel... The and I can so I can it sounds weird I know but I can feel it off you now like even like even the power it's like inside you type of thing and, um, the, energy, and the energy it's the energy though yeah, yeah the energy and you can feel it off something and even when you know two guys come together in the ring and I know obviously with bare knuckles it's, it's very you know a lot of fights they they are fifty fifty you know how they're gonna go but you can still when the guys come together you can tell 
oftentimes, you know, who's got that in, like the inner strength, yeah. Well, it's just looking, you know, the muscles and all this. And oftentimes, that's the fellow that's going to win, you know. Now, obviously, you know, with bare knuckles, it's not as predictable as you why it's exciting because it can go any way, you know. I mean, one punch. It is. That is it. That is definitely it. Yeah, you know, so and one punch can change anything, you know, and that's why it's, it's like such a buzz even to watch. But, you know, but you can still get that feeling of like, you know, one guy wants to be there more than the other. Or one guy has that, you know what I mean? And, and it's respect to anybody who steps in there. So I'm not, I'm not taking nothing away from, from nobody. But Joe, you, know, you can feel it, and that's why with yourself, I thought, you know what, I can feel that, and it's just something I wanted to touch on because people overlook no, that. But... Yeah, you know, it's a good one. It's a good answer as well. It's deep, but it's cool. Um, obviously, talking about age and talking about you know forty and all that, it's quite inspirational. I think it's quite cool, you know, because I think age is just a number. I do, to be honest. But from uh, the point of view of of sports and you know people have a certain idea you have to be this age you have to be that age and you don't I and mean, i know i've met people who have proven all that stuff wrong and i think all the age conversations mostly is, is bollocks and shit. But, mm. but you know um because there's so many people who proved it wrong you know different times um i, I was speaking to a fellow recently who, who or the end of last year who competed in glory kickboxing on his 41st birthday uh, and he had like he fought one of the best kickboxers in the world, you know, on his forty first but people were saying, Oh, you'll never do that and you're too old, you just do that and there and he proved them all wrong. So that you know, probably might do it more, Liam. Yeah, 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 motivated him more. And that's I think it really, you know, really put a fire in his belly to go and, you know, prove him wrong and all that. So, you know, so there's there's a lot of examples like that and that's that's only one. But still, looking at it from this point of view, you know, how far you've you've come now, um and I also I do hear you on the fact you're not doing it that but it, it's still cool that you started at a late age uh in terms of going back to the boxing like with the gloves on now and you started at quite a late age i think 28 wasn't it and, and everything so 29. yeah go back there you know and, and just talk about that time a little bit uh, because it does show that age is just a number and it's a little bit motivational to people i think a little bit inspirational motivational i think it is you know that, that you started at, at that age and you've obviously got to the level you're at now which is obviously a high level i know you're you're quite humble about it, but it is a high level. So, what was the inspiration um, with it? I mean, like to start boxing at that age. What happened? I want to go back and, and just get into that story a little bit. You know, of, uh, of that time in your life. Um, and yeah, you... cool, mate. Yeah. I was. I went through a stage of my life, Liam. Like I say, uh, you, you, <laughs> there, there was things I was told you can't do, shouldn't do, and one of them was I was told I couldn't weightlift. Um, and I went from, I was 12 stone, and at my biggest stage, I got to 18 stone, seven, um, full of steroids, you know, jabbing everything, jabbing every muscle, fucking nearly killing myself, giving myself a heart attack. Um, but I was I was loving it. I wasn't a bodybuilder giving myself too much credit. I was just a juice if you get what I'm saying. Um, but I loved the life, and I trained hard. As you, you see how I trained with uh, fighting. I put the same love and dedication into weightlifting. That's why I got as big as what I did. Um, and then we, we had a health scare. Um, I ended up in hospital due to the steroids. Um, and I cut a lot of weight very shortly. There was a lot of water. I was carrying a lot of water, a lot of fake weight sort of thing to the steroids and all the eating 20 chickens a day and whatever else. And uh, I, uh, I had a right scare. I was in hospital for a week um, and I come out and I'd lost about two stone and... Yeah, I knew that I was going to kill myself if I carried on taking, well, not taking steroids, but abusing steroids. Um, so I changed them and I stopped juicing and I tried training naturally. And I did like it, to be fair. Um, and I went for a little while doing that. And then I, I was doing security at the time, um, running doors. And that was, I was, that, it was going really well, actually. It was good. It was going well. Um, and I started just doing a bit of boxing. Like, well, boxing is light, actually. I was hitting a bag, just punching a bag like a big old fight I was. Um, but did enjoy it sort of thing, you know, crowding and grunting like you do in the gym. Everyone looking at you, you think you're right, tough twat. And uh, the, uh, I got a sort of little buzz for it and I started seeing someone doing pads um, and I started asking them to take me on pads. So anyway, he, he took me on pads and then through the circles that I was doing security with and that, um, I knew Colton Leach quite well. Um, and he was fighting, at the time he was representing West Ham and he was fighting, I think it was Tony Denham. Tony Denham, yeah. And he was Millwall, 
is it Tony Denham? Yeah, at least I think it was Tony Denham. And he was fighting Mill, uh, like representing Millwall. And obviously Colton was representing West Ham. And they was had a big show, unlicensed fight going on at the Troxy Theatre in London. And a lot of my circles were obviously wrapped around that because of security in South of London and Essex. And um, they asked me if I wanted to fight. I was just under 16 stone at the time. Obviously, I, I'd never had a fight, like a boxing fight in my life. I'd been in a bag and I thought, yeah, fuck it. I, I, I'll give it a go sort of thing. So I said to Colton, yeah, yeah, I'll fight. And that sort of thing. Took the fight. Took the fight. Never fought before. Didn't know what it was about. Anyway, we got there. As soon as we turned up, we got told our opponent had changed. And it was an ex-professional fighter that had just got out of the nick after he lost his pro fight or some shit like this. And his name was Paddy, right? I looked at my coach and my caller man and he was like, Paul, this is a setup. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's not right. You know I, mean? I was like, no, no, of course not. Like, it's fine, fine or whatever. I, I, I don't think it was a setup, to be fair, mate, if you get what I'm saying. I don't think it was. I just think it was just the way it goes in unlicensed boxing. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, long story short, there, and we fucking, we, we said we was going to do it. I went down to the ring, down the ring wall, Troxy Theatre London's a big old gaff, like, it's, there's a, I think it, I think it's a cut, a few thousand it holds, I think, um, but it's massive, but obviously theatre's seating like this, you know, I mean, everyone's looking down on you anyway. Got in the ring, referee comes up to me, I, I mean, Paddy didn't look like, he was probably about fucking four stone lighter than me at the time, but you can tell he had a boxer's physique there, do you know what I mean? Anyway, gone to uh, the centre of the ring, and the referee goes, right, three threes. Now, I'd never done a three-minute round in my life, Leo. I'd only trained two minutes. Now, in my head, I, I ain't too silly with me. I'm thinking, fucking hell. So by the end of the second round, I've done my six minutes. I'm going to have nothing. <laughs> and we've still got another half that time again. Yeah, I won't talk this out within like three seconds in my head. I'm thinking I've got another half a fight to have with him. I thought, but I've got this. You know what I mean? I trained myself well. So I went, yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, long story short, he fucking pinged my head off, Liam. Absolutely pinged. How else if I have? I do not know. Well, I do know how. I had a big fat neck on me for all the steroids I was doing. And, uh, you know, I mean, I could just take a shot. I caught him with one good punch in the whole fight. And, yeah, to, to be fair, it, it felt like I was going to... Uh, like get some form of maybe him having a little bit of wobbly legs or whatever, but he just stepped off and jabbed me about three times. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just lit me up, mate, and just he won the fight on a decision, and uh, I got educated into boxing there, um, and then that, that that lit me up, mate. Obviously, I lost in front of thousands of people, in front of like solid people as well, um, even though. All they could do was give me credit because obviously they knew that I was no boxer and everyone knew about Paddy. They knew who he was, his name and you know, what he's about, Liam, sort of thing. But I didn't give a fuck about that. Um, yeah, so I, I loved it. I loved the buzz. Even though I lost the fight, it was totally irrelevant to me. It got me, mate. And then from there, I went and had 18 unlicensed fights. No, I think it was 19, actually. Yeah, Paddy was 20 with Paddy. Um, I fought up to 10 round fights on the unlicensed. I won London Pride title, the British title and the international title. Um, smashed it, mate. You know what I mean? I got uh, one loss, one draw. Um, I lost my first fight and the rest were wins with about six knockouts. And some of them first round as well. <laughs> wow. Amazing. That, yeah, first round as well. That's a sign of, of things to come. But that is amazing because, I, like I said to you before, like even though I followed your career from the time of sort of getting into the, the bare knuckle side of things, you know, obviously getting licensed, I was, I've heard about it now because I can follow you now, but I didn't know even all of that. So that is that is amazing and it's amazing achievements as well, uh, I've got to say. So, you know, big respect on that. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite a start to the journey. I mean, it's, you know, fair play. And, um, it's powerful, man. We only set out to have one fight, Liam. I only set out to have one unlicensed fight. Um, but when I lost it, I just had to do myself right. And I ended up having 20, mate. Um, and it was the same with a professional, mate. At the time, I started when we were 28. I, I, I didn't fight for a year because I'd had a baby. Um, but the family up this and the other. So out of them years, I didn't fight for a full solid year. Um, my pad man at the time, Kevin Lilly, he was doing my pads for my professional. He was like, why don't you feel about going pro? And I was 
ball him, and I thought, fucking, that ain't never going to happen. Do you get what I'm saying? Anyway, long story short, he, he came to me a couple of months later. He said, listen, you train harder than, than, than like, at the time then, I was on my own licence. I was banging out everyone. I was winning titles. I was fit as fuck. Do you know what I mean? I was having it, mate. Um, and he was like, look, you know, I think you could make it pro. And at the time, the board was, it was when they used to come and see you and they used to watch you do pads, watch you do a circuit. And they used to get you to spar, believe it or not. They fucking wouldn't dare do that now. But they used to get you to spar, Liam. Um, and yeah, we ripped to the bold and, and, and to be fair with you, mate, actually the truth of it, they, they said that they wanted to come down and do a trial. They'd done the trial. Um, I actually passed that because obviously that's physical. They can see what you got sort of thing. It's like they, they, they come down with a clipboard, literally, or they used to tick you off on the stuff they're testing you on. Um, but then the ball knocked me back for medical reasons about my pro licence. And I had to sit, um, I appealed it and I had to go and sit and appeal in the office in London, uh, representing myself. Um, and I appealed it and then they granted it, mate. And then that's what I thought. So sort of, I'll just have one pro licence because obviously I was I was knocked back on medical issues. But I, I appealed that, got over that, got over that sort of wall that was put up, achieved that. Then I thought, right, I'll just have one fight, you know, as an achievement thing that I could turn professional sort of thing. Um, and then we ended up having six fights at three different weight classes, fighting for two different titles, professional, mate. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. Well, you know, just the fact that you jump in the deep end, you know what I'm saying? You just, you just, like that attitude, I love it, man. I have so much respect for it of like, you know, you're just there and you're like, well, fuck it, what's the worst that can happen? This is, this is like an adventure, this is, this is fun, whatever. And you're just in there. I got, I got a lot of respect for that, man. That, that, you know, because you never know. I mean, until you try, you never know. And, and, you know, it was, uh, that is really something. That is really, really something. Fair play. Because uh, obviously, yeah, I've heard about those those six fights as well. So you were you were busy, um, you know. Even yeah, before... I mean, we started off at light heavyweight. My first fight at light was at light heavyweight professional, and my last fight was a middleweight. Yeah, man, that is that is crazy moving around the weights as well. I mean, because because if you think about it now, like everything you've been saying from, you know, the unlicensed from the time you were doing the weightlifting and the heavy stuff, like the different sizes that you've been at is. That's quite something as well, actually. And, and, you know, just to say to all the fans as well, the fact you moved around them, you know, I don't think a lot of people realise, but that's that's really something as well, because that's hard to do. I mean, you Yeah, mate, it. I mean, my last professional fight was, I was 11 stone four them. Like, I, that was, I had a six-pack. Fuck me, I ain't seen a six, I've never had a six-pack. <laughs> and I got to 11 stone four, but then that's how it is with me. I got to 11 stone four, which was the physical challenge. I smashed it, and it got knocked out in the second round. Because I had nothing in me, Liam. Do you know what I mean? I fight now at 12 stone. I think I fight 12 stone five, like 79 key. Mate, I'm on it. You know what I mean? I can take a fucking sledgehammer around the head and I can give a sledgehammer around the head at 12 stone five. So that is my fight weight. I walk around it now, Liam. Do you get what I mean? You know, people could call a fight on me this weekend. I'll do a weigh-in tomorrow and I'll, I'll probably be like 80 key or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, that is, it makes sense. I mean, those brutal weight cuts, like if, if you come down too low, that's just, I don't know how people do it, man. I mean, there's a, you know. Listen, you, know, you like, can't be even dreaming about doing that at 40, Liam. Fucking hell, mate. You you, you ain't going to survive it, mate. You ain't going to survive it. I know, I know. It's dodgy at the best of times. Like, even like where I am down here in Wales, there's a fella, um, Lou Selby, who used to have the IBF world title at like, featherweight in, like, in pro boxing. And he used to walk yeah, around. Yeah, you follow him mate. You him well of the way he cuts is disgusting disgusting yeah. yeah he stopped he packed all that in now he's gone up to lightweight and that and he's, he's oh he has yeah yeah, yeah he's moved up now because he just because because he was getting um i mean I, I remember when he was probably like late 20s like 29 30 something like that he was he was all right but he was starting to struggle by the time he was like 31 32 it was fucking it was doing him in and after yeah, your body, ch body yeah, changes you could see it and it was just like and like when I would see him in the gym, it's just one example. I mean, lots of people do it. But when I would see him in the gym, and he'd be like a like more his natural weight, like when he walks around and stuff like that, and like the power he hit with and everything like this, and then he cut the weight, and he looked like he had bloody. He looked he looked ill. He looked like he had HIV or something. Yeah. Like he got the cheekbones, and he got like. And it's like that's not good for you, man. So he's moved up now, you know, luckily. But um, yeah, that like with the fight with Warrington, Josh Warrington, and that he was he was so dread like weight drained. He was, Oh, it's insane. So I've, I've seen all that up close, man, and you know, but like realizing how much you've, you've done that is, you know, it's next level as well. 
Um, so you know, fair play to you for moving around with the trap and then quite a bit of it with the weight. I didn't know that about Carlton though. I didn't know that's where it where it started because I met Carlton actually the first time um, end of last year uh, at an event he was doing in family in Cardiff. He's a really nice fella as well. Uh, so he's a good man. man. No, he's a good man, mate. I mean, he he was obviously there. You know, his life sort of thing. Um, he was still really lively um, at that stage. He, he had a few. He had a bar actually local to where we were. Um, and, and that's it. I had a lot of doors. He approached me about, you know, obviously security and that, and, and it just went from there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a good bloke. Sorry, fell. I met him and some of his team and that as well. And obviously, I'd heard about him and all that, but, but meeting him was, was cool. But yeah. Anyway, we, we're going more off topic with that. But no, it's some yeah, good sorry people. about that. No, no, I do it too. It's, it's some good people. I was solid. So obviously, we've talked about the future, you know, we've talked about the past, we've talked about quite a few, quite a few different things. And obviously there's some big fights out there for you. We've talked about that as well. So really, you know, in terms of like wrapping this up and in terms of coming just to the like the last couple of things, is that yep. obviously your, your fans and your supporters. Now, when I put this interview out there, obviously, you know, there'll be people who watch this and listen to this who, who follow you and they come to your fights and all that. And there'll be people who watch this and listen to this. Maybe it's the first time they've actually heard, like heard you talking and heard about your life and, and things like that. And hope, you know, hopefully it'll be both. But for the people that support you and, you know, like your loyal fans, because obviously I know I know you said you're not doing it for that and I respect that. But the sport, you know, without the fans wouldn't be anything. I'd like to give them a mention. What would you say to Definitely. them? What would, you, what would you say to the people, you know, who actually come to your fights, you know, pay to watch them or, or all that or watch them uh, with a streaming or anything? Just any words for them? Anything you'd say to them? Oh, listen, I, I receive messages daily, Liam. Uh, DMs off of my Insta. I run my Insta. I my, my put my training up and things like that. That's not for people to blow smoke up my arse. I couldn't give a shit. I don't care about no one knowing what I do at all. But it's the drive and the consistency that I receive back in my messages from people that are sort of maybe less, you know, less capable of going out and living their dreams or whatever. Um, and it helps people mentally, which is something that we all suffer from. I don't care who you are. I know everybody out there suffers from some form of mental strain and stress. Um, and the, the positivity and the good energy that I get from my Instagram and, and, and my following, I don't realise what it does for people, Liam. It's unbelievable. Like, I personally do this because of my things and, and, you know, my drawbacks in life and what I've been set up against, and I'm doing it for my reasons. But I don't realise what people see me getting over my things, uh, the drive it gives them, you know, and uh, I just can't thank them enough because I wouldn't say it doesn't drive me because it does. It, it does. That energy that you, if you give off positive energy and a drive that, that you reach in some form of goal and it, it affects someone else to do that to them, it, it drives you even more, Liam, you know, um, and, I, I, and I, I can't thank them enough. And, I, and you know, that is, every show that I go to, I get different people coming up and going, Paul, I've been following you, you know, it's me on it, because everyone's got a different name on Instagram to their real name sort of thing. They go, you know, me fucking Jack123, that's me, like, no, it's been me who's been messaging you, give me a card and have a photo and that, and, uh, you know, it warms me, Liam, because I, I, I'm up against it in the reasons why I do it. So I don't think past what it's doing, apart from what it's doing for myself, if you get what I mean. And then to get the positivity and, the, the, you know, the, the, just the, the, the good energy from the fans of BKB that love the sport. Um, and, you know, what other does it is the... <laughs> Fans are ruthless, Liam. They are ruthless. And trust me, as much positive... In fact, I don't get as much negativity as I do positive. I get a hell of a lot more positivity than I do negativity. But the negativity that I get and people criticising and saying and they've always got something to say, oh, you, you're shit, you, you've done this, you, why are you fine this? You know, you're crap. You, you look at you compared to so-and-so. That drives me as well, mate. You know what I mean? Um, and it makes me appreciate the people that do support my following because it's so easy to criticise people you don't know, Liam. When you don't know their situation and you just think they ain't as good as you, oh, you know, he's shit, he's shit. It's easy, you know, it's easy to have an opinion sort of thing. Um, and the negativity that I get just makes me appreciate the positive people that follow me even more. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I've got to shout them and, and just say to them that the team already is part of them as well. They are part of the team already. You know, me getting through the ring and shedding my blood and tears for them is as much as my own journey as it is their journey, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, big time. That's a powerful answer. I knew that would be a good answer, mate. But honestly, it's a fucking good answer because you know what? It, it is. It is a powerful thing. It is a powerful thing, and it's one of the reasons. Like obviously, as well as the fighting, and as well as your your skill, you know, with the fighting, it was also that sort of that quality that you have. Um, I don't know how to put it because I'm not I'm not throwing spokes saying this. I swear, you know. But it's just just the way you sort of carry yourself, and it just I just knew there's got to be more of a story behind this guy. I didn't know. I didn't know about some of that with rugby unlicensed and weightlifting and all this. I knew you'd had unlicensed fights, but I didn't know you'd won all that and everything. But I knew, I just thought, you know, this guy, it's got, it's got to be. And then, obviously, um, I did know about you turning pro late and then, well, really unlicensed at 28 and all that. And I thought, this is going to be a fucking good story. And it's just, it does have an impact on people. And at the position you're in, obviously, with being, you know, well-known, well-respected and everything like that, it does, it does have an impact on people because, obviously, they see these things and it can get somebody to a hard day or to a hard week or something, you know. Or, you it know. does, yeah. and, and like I say, that gives me drive because I, I was going to stop my Instagrams and stop my things. And, and uh, yeah, I, I messaged a couple of people saying, listen, I felt I'm going to drop off of social media a bit because I just don't really feel, I never set out to be this person that's looked at on social media. I'm not looking for credit or clout through social media. And the message I got back was like, Paul, the reason why we've got through our, our downtime is because you fucking advised us and we watched you not giving a fuck about people's opinions and only driving for your own happiness. Now you're half being a hypocrite and saying that you, you're going to quiet and, you know, your social media following down because of, you know, whatever. And I just thought, you know what, you know, like you've got to practice what you preach. And, uh, yeah, we just, like we do, Liam, we just crack on, mate. You know what I mean? We just keep going, you know? Yeah. No, that's that's a powerful message, though, mate. It's the best way to do it. But I, honestly, I am glad you have kept it because, you know, we need more people. And especially, like, with, with the times people have been through, like, with COVID and some of the stuff that's been happening. And I know it's that's not been... That's where it all started, Liam. That's where it all started because I was yeah. doing... At the time, I was doing free lives for people and training with no weights in the garden. Um, and just body circuits, mate. And I was religious doing it every day, going out running, doing live running with people. And the following I got, and, and like, I believe that I got a lot of people through their depression, um, including myself. Like, I ain't saying, oh, yeah, I, I weren't bothered about it. You know, actually saying that I love lockdown because I don't feel I've spent enough, I don't feel I've spent enough time with my family, or well, I didn't. And uh, having my kids with me, and I built my sponsor built a gym at my house for me so I could train from my house um, and training with the kids in the gym. I actually love lockdown, Liam. I don't like seeing people anyway. I'm very antisocial. I've not got a big circle of friends. So I was teaching my kid with a homeschool in the morning, training with him in the afternoon. I loved it. I didn't, like, I didn't want us to come out of lockdown, do you know what I mean? But I got a lot of people following me and a lot of appreciation was shown for my drive. And uh, I think that's what lit it, lit it up, like, about the journey being a lot deeper than just being a, being a fighter and winning fights, you know what I mean? That's it. That's it, exactly. And that's obviously what we've got into today as well, which I'm, you know, even with this talk as well, which I'm just, like, over the moon about that we've got in there some of that deeper stuff as well as just... Because I, I do like to do that with my interviews, man. You know, what even when I interview people and there's some some tough individuals and all the rest of it, but I always like to go deeper than just the, you know, the blood and the pain and all. I love you, that's, that's great, but there's so much more to people, you know, than, yeah, than cool. just... You know, and, and to you and to, to other people as well. So the biggest thing, champ, is we've got into some good stuff. So, I mean, you know, that's everything that I wanted to cover. And I just want to say, obviously, a big thank you again for, I know I said at the beginning, but for taking time out your evening and, you know, sharing everything you've shared and being so open and all of it, mate. It's been great. It's been, honestly, it's really been fantastic. And Thank you for your time. Chance. Yeah. Can and, I um, just uh, can I a shout on for my sponsors, Liam, and just yes. for BKB? Cut in, yeah. if you get what I mean, at the end sort of thing, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to just go into it, bruv, yeah? Cool. Yeah, nice, all right. So, obviously, with the journey, it's hard with my children as uh, my main sort of thing that I take care of these days. I am a star. I'm dad, should we say, I'm a professional fighter. There's a team of us now, a team already, that is really, really pushing through and uh, supporting me on these sort of bigger fights and these bigger camps I'm having. And I just do want to give them a shout out. Um, total Waste Management down in Essex. Please Google them. 
Um, you'll see their you'll see their logo and their stuff on on my Insta if you if you want to get in contact with them. Any any waste management, recycle needs, anything at all, please hit them up. The company speaks for itself. You've only got to Google them and you'll find out all about them. Um, we've got Black Sheep Dispensary, which is my CBD um, supplement company to help me out. Google them as well. They're on Insta, Black Sheep Dispensary. Um, you've only got to jump on my Insta to get all these companies and you can at them and ask any questions or get any of their products. Um, we've got Time Bomb Tattoos over in Canby, supporting me for years. And I've got to shout them out, please. Um, that they, they, they really, really have stuck by a team already through, uh, through my boxing and now through the bare knuckle. They've jumped back on now. Um, the, 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 the fights were getting bigger and they know that I was struggling and they contacted me and said, listen, we're happy to come back on the team um, to, to, you know, to support the bigger, bigger journey. So I can't thank them enough. And we've got BoxFit UK that obviously do all the team already gear that you see us in. Um, these hoodies are sick at the minute with a BKB on the thing. Um, contact them for any team already stuff. Uh, they do my fight shorts. You've seen the kit I fight in. Um, obviously, if you look at the bollocks, you fight the bollocks. So hit them up for your fight needs. I've uh, got a great shop in Hornchurch. Uh, Google them, find them out. We've got CMOS Co., which is a great supplement that I use. Uh, you've only got to Google CMOS Gel and you'll find out what it's about. Um, contact him on Insta, CMOS Co. Um, he does all the different blends and uh, you Google them or jump on his Insta and it will tell you all about the benefits of that. Um, and we've got Ringmaster Boxing, which I'm down there now. This is giving me a base for my camps. Um, it's a great boxing gym. Ollie down there has been so, so, um, I don't know what the word is, just accommodating is the right word, actually, to work around my needs through camp. Um, and he's a good person and he runs a good club down there, Ringmaster Boxing um, in Leon C. Yeah, thank you, Leon, for that, mate. All right. Yeah, no worries at all, mate. Uh, that's really good to give them a shout out. Oh, I Oh, sorry, Liam. I've got another one. If you can cut this back in, because these I are... Will, I will, I will. I'm so sorry, mate. Um, I'll give a shout-out as well to Churchill Car Sales in, uh, in Malden. They're a great company that's jumped on our last fight with the American. Really happy. They had a ringside table that night, and uh, they was great support. And uh, the boys down there are helping me out more, more than people know. And I just want to thank them for jumping on the team. Thank you, Liam. I'm fucking terrible. You know what it is? All the time I've never thanked them and these boys and companies have really, really, like, personally given me messages and really said, listen, Paul, we know you're 40, you know, it's your last, you know, it's your last sort of run at the fucking go for it and we want to, like, we want to support you. So I do want to start sort of crediting them more, Liam. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, big time. It's really good to give them a shout out as well because the differences your sponsors can make in, in a fighter's life. Oh, it's, mate, massive, mate, mate, yeah. Absolutely. So, it's really, yeah, like like we were saying about the fans, you know, it's the same sort of thing, the support they give. It's really, really good to give that a shout-out. And I will say to all of our viewers as well, um, obviously, Paul is on, on social media as well, so you're quite contactable on there. Um, and I know, you know, anyone who wants to give you a follow, drop you a message on Instagram as Team War Ready. So, it's Team underscore War underscore Ready. Um, and uh, also, you're on Facebook as well. And I know you're very contactable. In all these places as well so anyone wants to follow you and uh sort of take part in your journey they can do that as well uh, obviously any any other sponsors want to come on board obviously they can contact you as well i will put that out there uh, so i think i saw a post about that on something recently so, yeah um, I've, i i i just uh we, we we come through there was a couple of sponsors that was struggling a little bit and obviously it depends i want to offer them a service as well Liam. it's not all about what they can help me out i want to make sure they're getting sank out of it and and they just wasn't so we just shook hands and we just split our ways um and uh yeah like that's that, that's basically where it is now i've got a couple of spaces for like solid sponsors um two really um on the team um and obviously i'm trying with intent now he's come off the sponsorship team but he's still my strength and conditioning coach um, his work alex is just unbelievable um and uh, I, I i had to have him on the team but he's got so busy now that he had to pull away from the sponsorship um, but I, we, we, we still need him with us. He's bringing the best out of me at 40. So, uh, take, train with intent is still on the team, but he's left up like a gap for the sponsorship, you know? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, it's good to give them a shout out as well, champ. Well, I can get that in there. 
Um, you enjoy the rest of your evening as well. I'm going to go out my dinner now because I haven't uh, eaten nothing. Liam, yet. thank you, mate. Thank you for your time, all right? Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there will be more videos coming soon.